He's not positively doing evil. He doesn't represent an evil force. And while hell itself as a place for punishment after life would not be mentioned in the Old Testament, a real location for it during life was described. Behold, days are coming, says the Lord, when this place shall no longer be called the Valley of the Son of Hinnom, but the Valley of Slaughter. And I will make this city a horror, a thing to be hissed at. Jeremiah 19, 8. This is the valley referred to by the prophet Jeremiah. It gained notoriety for a period during which the citizens of its town, both Jew and pagan alike, participated in violent, inhuman practices. Its name, Gehenna, became synonymous with consummate evil. I've been to hell. Many times I've been there and walked through it. It's a valley on the south side of the city of Jerusalem that anciently was a despicable place of uh, child sacrifice. It's mentioned in the Hebrew Bible a number of times. No longer called Gehenna, the infamy of this now idyllic place continues to enthrall the natives of Jerusalem. In Jesus' day, it was a garbage dump. And so the fire was always burning and the maggots working and dead animals were thrown in there. Today, if you walk out the dung gate and look down into the Valley of Hinnom, that's hell. Recent polls indicate a growing belief in Western society of the actuality of a heaven or hell awaiting us. I can say personally that I live my life worrying about hell and heaven. I believe in heaven. I believe there is a hell. Yes, I believe there's an afterlife whether I'm going to burn in hell for my life or be rewarded with everlasting bliss for what I've done in my life, that's, I'm not sure. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Daniel 12, 2. The book of Daniel, the final book of the Hebrew Testament, is the first to explicitly indicate that a heaven or hell awaits us in the next life. Not coincidentally, it is written during Israel's darkest hour. In the second century before Christ, the Holy Temple is desecrated by Assyrian invaders who also threaten genocide. The Jews, led by Judah Maccabeus, rise up and defeat the enemy in the most critical victory in their beleaguered history. Now, a worldly nation that has survived aggression from every quarter for a thousand years, many Israelites question the promise held out in the early books of the Bible. New voices are now heard, like that of the visionary Enoch, who claims to have been witness to our destinies after life. When he hurls out against you, terror of fire, where shall you flee? You sinners, you are accursed forever. There is no peace for you, but you, souls of the righteous, fear not and be hopeful. First Enoch 102. The apocryphal book of Enoch is the first place that we find a class of fallen angels who are positively evil, who come to earth and lead humans into evil and into a fiery valley of torment where they are punished forever. So this is probably the oldest ancestor of hell. Long before the Bible was written, God-fearing peoples throughout the world had looked to the sky as an inviting place to which souls might ascend after life. Most cultures believe in a heaven. Mm -hmm. 
So also do they believe there is a less pleasant place we might find ourselves if we take the wrong path while on Earth. Many cultures have a hell. But none has developed the broad range of specific punishments as introduced in the New Testament and elaborated on during succeeding centuries. Perhaps the most terrifying aspect of the Christian hell is that it might be real. These scenes from the 1943 film Angel on My Shoulder, starring Paul Muni as a recently arrived gangster, reflect the nightmarish images many of us familiar with 2,000 years of literature, art, and sermons on the subject share with each other. The ruler of this dark kingdom, called variously Lucifer, Mephistopheles, Satan, the devil, is played by Claude Rains. What sort of temperature is that? It's the labor shortage, sire. Especially the boiler room personnel. There's been a fearful trap. Do you want me to catch my death of cold? No, sire. His characterization also seems to fit our preconception of what the fallen angel might be like. Clever, cruel, charming, very human. You married millions of women have adored me. Quite a guy with the ladies, eh? I'm a fascinating fellow. I think if there is a devil, he's incredibly sexy. I think he's probably a heroin addict. I think he's got big black bags under his eyes. I think he's a brilliant dancer. And I think he's the kind of guy at a nightclub that you go, ooh, but I'd really like to go home with him, but I'd really be much better off going home and writing my diary. That's what I think he's like. 2,000 years ago, the writers of the Gospels first described the devil as an evil tempter. When Jesus is sent by God to the wilderness for 40 days, he encounters and must defeat the former angel, also known as Lucifer. The devil said to him, If you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him, until an opportune time. Luke 4, 13. Clearly, Jesus was tempted in his own, in his own life and ministry. Uh, I think Jesus must have been tempted um, to give up. So I think this is a symbolic way of saying that Jesus had to struggle with temptation in his own life. And that's certainly very much a part of the Christian tradition. It's in the letter to the Hebrews also. Like us in everything but sin, but also tempted as we are tempted. While the Gospels of the New Testament are far more concerned with the life and death of Jesus than tales of Satan, he and his fiery kingdom are much more prominent than in the Hebrew Bible. People uh, view hell, they have the wrong concept of it. One of the reasons there's a hell is because God is so loving that he won't force people to do anything against their will. Force love is not love. Force love is rape, and God is not a divine rapist. He loves people so much that he will say to them, uh, you don't want to worship me? You don't want to praise me? You don't want to come to my place? Do your own thing. In other words, hell is a place where people can do their own thing forever. The torture that people say is in hell is never found anywhere in the Bible. You will never find the word torture used. It's torment. God is not pushing people in a room against their will and turning up the flames and, and say, burn. As Christ's time on earth neared its end, his warnings of the judgment awaiting mankind became more apocalyptic. If unrepentant sinners had missed his meaning in the Gospels, no question could remain for anyone who heard the works of Revelation, the final book of the New Testament. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the beast and false prophet were. And they will be tormented day and night, forever and ever. 
Revelation 